So I had talked to Harris Savitas about um, that I wanted to make a movie in black and white and digital because I hadn't worked digital before and or black and white. And I said, you know, would you help me kind of test cameras and test a look and, you know, sort of see if this could be done and done in a way that we thought was beautiful. He had told me about you already. He was like, for the next one, we should yeah. go to Pascal. And then he said, Sam Levy knows these cameras really well, so I think I'd, if, I'd like to bring him into the tests. David and I brought all this stuff. We brought different lenses, bigger lenses, and uh, so well, let's just let's try let's try everything that we can try. And I remember Harris looked at this big box of lenses, and he's like, "What are those?" It's like, "Well, they're these they're Zeiss lenses." And he's like, "If we use those, then we're making a movie." The first tests were shot with Greta, actually, with Harris, you, David, Feeney Mosier, who also was the AC on Francis when we did it. And we shot Greta sitting on a couch by a window, just with light coming up in the window. Then we panned her over. The focus was terrible. All over the, the whole, place. Yeah. And I remember seeing that footage and saying to myself, OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, there was no script even. It was, yeah. that was, at that point, it was really like, wow. we also shot on 8th Street. We shot night and day. And we shot outside some apartment building, crossing the street, because we were also testing how the camera held the shadow, shadow and, and, and uh, movement. And motion. motion, yeah. So that was the first test, which was probably over a year before when we actually shot Francis, right? I mean, it was something like that. Um, yeah. And I'll just say quickly, and then I want to hear your guys' sides of it, but I, um, I, it was a few months after that, we were in LA, and Harris was there, and he said, there's a film out of the test I want you to see. And we had lunch in Hollywood, and then I guess he thought we were going to go to the lab in Hollywood, but it was actually we had to go to the lab in the Valley. And I had not, I would just gotten my driver's license and hadn't driven on a freeway ever. Maybe. And That's I didn't, I, I was sort of, I didn't tell Harris this, and I was so excited to see what, what the test looked like. So I followed him, uh, just total trial by fire, like on the, on the freeway. Um, cool. Yeah. And, uh, and felt good about myself. We made it, and then we went into the room and we watched it. And it was so short. I kept we kept watching it over and over. And I have to say, I was so excited. That was when I saw the test. Then I was like, we can do this movie. This is really exciting. It was the visual equivalent of what I f when Greta and I first started sending ideas back and forth about the movie. I was like, oh, this this is going to be something. And I felt like that you could make something look this way. Yeah. I think the hardest part of the film was to make it feel like we didn't really do anything, that right. we weren't there, that the camera wasn't even present. The digital world is uncharted territory. Everyone's writing it is on road. I mean, in photography, we have all the recipes, all the formulas for years that have been, you know, explored in so many different ways that, you know, how do you differentiate yourself? Why do you feel before, feel, even though everyone knew all the technique, why do they feel all so unique? And today, films that are digital feel so much like the same. Right. Again, because I feel like digital camera manufacturers or the people behind the software, you know, are trying to represent reality. But reality is boring. Well, it's true in film, and it still holds true now, is that the, an image is really it's a projection of the personality of the people who create it. And that's ultimately, you know, to talk about Harris again, since I was lucky to be able to work alongside him and then to later be his friend and then to have him introduce me to you. That's what makes Harris's work so exceptional. For those of us lucky to know him was, you know, the personality of, of the guy it was just, he was just a terrific, person and it shows in the work and he was also you know a fastidious researcher nobody worked harder nobody prepared more carefully yeah. than Harris but his personality was just you can't put it into words and that's still what we strive for now and what you know what what gives me hope is and what was good on Francis was 
you know, things were so contained. And it came out of the idea you had to work a certain way that led us to a small camera. And what was fortuitous was I already had a confidence about the camera. I thought, this camera is terrific. You know, I'd been shooting with video for some years. And to me, it was sort of like a mini revelation, this, this new camera. And then things just came together in this great way to do that test that day and to be with Harris and you. And it was just like, it was really joyous. And I remember somewhat in the middle of the day, you looked around, you thought, this feels like how the, the new wave guys probably did it. And I feel like if we'd had a sound guy, we could have started shooting the movie and a script <laughs> and a cast. But that idea of if we go there, it becomes a real movie was sort of like our half serious credo as we shot this whole movie, which was in a way like, it's not a movie until we're done, which obviously wasn't true, but it was a way to kind of keep that kind of exploratory feeling going while we were shooting. You know, even though we were shooting a fixed script, we had a cast and we had, you know, it was a movie, but there was always that feeling of like, once you go to a certain place, it's like an invisible line. Like once you go past that line, then you're gonna need more people. You're gonna need, you know, once you start adding lenses. One great thing he said to me, as we went off, he said, you know, your job really is to do very little. You guys will block, and you guys will figure out where the actor should go, where the camera should go, but, but try not to do too much more than that. And it was a good way to send us off. And Aris, you got to give all the credit to him for inspiring me uh, and you and all of us to push ourselves with this small camera and not be afraid to go for what we love in terms of images and, and really make it happen. It was a big inspiration. But having done the tests so far in advance, even before I had written the script, it was, it was great to know that, that this you is, could. you know, you don't write in black and white, you're just writing a movie, but kind of having those images still playing in the back of my head mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. was, and even while cutting the movie, because when I'm cutting the movie, I'm looking at it in black and white, but I'm looking at it. Yeah, desaturated. Yeah, yeah, black just, and white just with yeah, the yeah. color turned off, mm -hmm. and it's not the same thing. But I still, like, knew on the other end of this, there's going to be this Some magic, look. yeah, 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 yeah. Which, is, which connects us to the past, I think. That was a good thing for me about Really, when we got to timing, it connects us to the great black and white films, the modern black and white films that we love, like Manhattan, the Jim Jarmusch films, but especially the old uh, silvery, you know, Lubitsch films or Bergman films, Kurosawa films. And when I say that, it's like having the faith that at the end of the line, we'll get something else. And I think that something else will be magical, which is when you shoot film, you know, the first things that I ever shot were black and white reversal as a student. And you, it was just blind faith. You know, you'd look through the viewfinder, then you'd get something back from the lab, and you know, it sometimes would be this amazing thing. And even if it wasn't, it was like you're looking at this black and white film. When I walked on this, it's not just the, the black and white that I care. It's, it's the volume that I was getting, especially during the test, and why we filtered it, and why we, you know to really get this, this tonal compression that really keeps it almost like 2D, you know? In a, in, and it's so funny because we had to create two different video streams in order to achieve that, and it's, it could have become a 3D film easily by just offsetting the picture, you know, literally, but it's interesting how, to me, the emotion is all there by the tonality of the pictures, mm -hmm. and, and, and that that's a key of, of image making, really, you know. The mid-tone of the 5D, there was like a video noise, which started, you know, almost resembled like a film grain. They're very similar. And shooting with a, an Alexa and a Red, the formats that we, dis we had discussed, you know, for Francis, just they don't do that. It's, it's cleaner. What's interesting is the video noise, in a way, if we hadn't done all these other things with it, might have been more annoying, you know, if you're trying to just do something more literal, you, you might feel like, oh, I wish you didn't see that. But what was great, I feel, about what we did with it and what you did with it is that it incorporated the videoness of it too. So mm -hmm. that when you do see little grid or a little bit of noise or something from the chip, it actually has emotion 
in the way film sure. has emotion, which which is something I think I really feel like I learned a lot from you and in, in, in working with you um, in, in this process was how to honor in some ways the videoness of it mm -hmm. at the same time that we're doing a lot of photochemical ideas, you know, or, or, or treating it with a lot of kind of concepts that come from photochemical mm -hmm. treatment, but is to sort of honor that so that it's, we're not making it literally look like film, we're making it evoke film but look like something new. It's always this idea of photography being an interpretation of reality, not a representation of reality. And I feel like what they do in digital today is so wrong because they're trying to represent reality, but it's never really been about that. It's always been about interpreting what that reality is. And right, it was to do less with it. To me, you can see it in parts of the movie. I know you dialed, dialed things back, but it creates this glow yeah. effect that to me is reminiscent of real silver. We would use that word silver when we were timing. It was find the silver, make it look more silvery. Where I think it works well, when Sophie goes to the dorm room and says, oh, can I come in? And she's drunk. And she walks through the dark room. And she opens up that door. You can see just a little bit of halo around her. Yeah. And there were times or, um, you know, when Lev's leaving the apartment and he's got his motorcycle helmet. I remember that was a place where we dialed it back a little bit, but it's still there, and it, we want it to be silvery and magical and beautiful, and all the things that we started out doing with Harris, but never distracting. Pascal, maybe walk through the process. So you're handed a color image. Yeah, yeah. You know. Which we filtered, because part right. of the original test, in fact, directly relating to this increase in mid-tone values, yellow helped a lot. So and used an 81B yeah. for, which is like a, you call that a champagne filter. Yeah, I call it's it like a, champagne. a warm champagne you filter. In my, in, my, in my photographic still world, it's called champagne. Yes, 81B, like... which is a little bit thinner for, in, for yeah. day interiors, and 81C, which is a little thicker for day exteriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I get this color, and it's a video log file, exposed flat, which is in digital, kind of have, you have to do it. You know, it's split in two values. There's, there's a positive value and a negative value. It's not desaturated at that point. I'm still leaving colors. Because when you take red, for example, and you bring cyan on top of red, it desaturates the red. So you don't really need desaturation. By taking a direct opposite color, you essentially cancel the color. So the idea was to try to make it as neutral as possible without making it black and white. And therefore, by keeping color information and dialing values, blue, green, you know, yellow, up and down, shot to shot to shot to shot, I was able to find the best, the best tonal range of each image. Then the trick was to throw out of focus one of the layers to make it blurry. And what it does is that it bleeds colors. We're still in color at this stage. Mm -hmm. It bleeds colors and therefore create roundness, which is lacking a lot in the digital. And this bleed, this color bleeding, creates this halo, this photographic halo, which is super natural because this is what you do when you dodge and burn of things. And then literally those, these two stream of video data now, uh, you know, perfectly synced, of course. Uh, like I said, we could have done a 3D film, uh, which I think we should one day be fun. Yeah, we should. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of uh, how it really was made, just just uh, a sandwich of two, of a negative and a positive. And then I mean, we should also, we, we had, you know, because we had these title cards. Perfectly clean black. Right, right. Type. You don't want to suddenly have, like, digitized title cards when you have this picture that has all this volume, volume and yeah. feeling. So we, we had all, there were a lot of discussions. How are the best way? There's, remember, uh, Sammy had the idea of like, we'll stencil them and film them back, you know, out. And then you just had this suggestion of make Xerox and then let's scan Xeroxes and stabilize them and make it feel like old 35. And then we even did the IFC starting logo this way. Right, you, uh, you did a, each frame of the Each logo. frame of the logo is a lot of frame, but you know. And why not doing a movie like that? Also, the story is a bit of this punk thing. I love there's this punk quality to it, you know? 
like a bit of a rebellious thing, kind of like, you know, well, this is how it's done, but this, we're not going to do it that way. That always can generate, always will generate great results in a way, because mm -hmm. it's genuine. It's not, you know, mm -hmm. it's not fake. You know, shooting in the plane. I mean, typically, like it's a big set. How cool is that? She's there. She's just like, why am I going to Paris with my book, you know? And she's mm -hmm. like, the light is bouncing, the way it bounces, that, that's how you see it. She's actually being lit by Tron. <laughs> by Tron. <laughs> that was the movie on the plane. <laughs> my musical comparison was the sort of Paul McCartney solo record in his basement, you know, after the Beatles, like Ram or something, because it's both a kind of punk rock idea and that he's kind of like, you know, you're, you're doing things like getting a sound you like because in the bathroom, because it sounds better in the bathroom, but it, it's, but the songs are so crafted and so they're big sounding. And, and this goes back to the first test. When I saw the test, I thought, no one's gonna grade me on a curve for this movie. And if I wanna do something kind of punk rock in a way, it, it's going to have to stand alongside everything I've done. It, it, it is a kind of hybrid, I suppose, of a kind of punk idea, but also with a kind of classic kind of approach Execution. to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, we shot it very classically. I mean, that is where it's sort of like the Lubitsch or, you know, these Howard Hawks kind mm -hmm. of blocking, and we kind of held back from Greta, and we kind of let her be in the space, let the actors be in the space made close-ups really count. I mean, there's only really one unmotivated move in the movie, which is the push-in on her at the end of the movie when she's, yeah. She, yeah. after she writes out her name. It's like the, that feeling of like, if it scares you, it's probably worth doing. Very much I, more admirable to actually have the consciousness to add, to be able to do that and to be able to look at it after, you know, a few movies and say, you know what, perhaps there's another way to do things. It has changed, you know, how uh, both the physical production but also just even aesthetically everything about how I shoot now. I kind of even was just going on faith that it was going to work out because I was having so much fun making it. So yeah. let's have fun with the next one and do it in color. <laughs>